love, sex, and relationships. On this week's episode... It starts off with just anger issues and then it kind of progressed with him not wanting to shower, not wanting to eat properly, oh, yeah. like the self-care element. It had got to a point when I remember saying to the doctor, it felt like my mask had slipped and I couldn't pick it up quick enough mm. to play mm. the game in society. Mm. Obviously my family, them kind of disowning me because of my sexuality mm. and me losing that attachment that I had with my mum, I kind of found it with my partner. I have dated like a lot of people that I think have had depression and I don't know how to deal with it because I wouldn't talk about it. Hi guys, welcome back to Mavro Talks Love, Sex and Relationships. Today we are talking about mental health in dating. Um, before we get into the discussion, however, who do we have with me? Um, my name is King George. I'm Amber. I'm Alex. Bradley. Tori. Harris. So mental health, and that's quite like an intense, you know what I mean, subject. Um, has anyone suffered with mental health before and would... <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Whole group. And Solid. Is anyone open to kind of explain how when oh, yeah i think so is and um, i get really bad like social anxiety is that mm. mental yeah. health yeah. 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 yeah i feel like i've actually suffered from a few different things i think a lot of people have and don't necessarily always realize um as a kid i was bullied so there was issues there then as i got older i had quite severe depression at the end of my last relationship to the point i'm not saying i ever wanted to take my life but i mm. thought a lot of suicidal stuff um, suffered quite badly from body dysmorphia, um, anxiety and insecurities. I think mm. it's obviously rife between mm. most people, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I was a similar. So I had, um, my family are riddled with mental health. We have a lot of bipolar and split personality disorders. So I'm very familiar with the process of how it all takes off. And I always thought, oh, I'm the normal one. I've escaped it because I've never experienced anything. Um, but then I went through a really bad breakup um, about six years ago and I, I couldn't sleep. I was crying like every day, all day. Um, a similar thing to like you, like I never really thought about killing myself, but there were many, many moments where I was just like, what's the point in living? Mm -hmm. um, and I would get severe anxiety attacks. I actually took myself to hospital once because I thought I was having an asthma attack, even I though I don't that. have asthma. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I couldn't breathe for three days. I was getting dizzy. And then the guy was like, it's a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And that was all brought on because of the breakdown of a relationship. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that was it really for me. I think for, my, for myself, in my experience, and I think for many other people, I think mental health can kind of like start to play up when you're in a relationship. And I feel like as an individual, I think for me, one thing I realised, when you first, when you meet someone and you're in a relationship with someone, as an individual, sometimes you can, you can become fixated with the person. When mm -hmm. I was young, I used to kind of, I used to watch my mum leave. Um, when my mum would leave the house, I'd run all the way upstairs and watch her from the bedroom window until I couldn't see her no more. And then I realised as an adult, I started doing it to my boyfriend. But my Aww. parents, obviously my family, them kind of disowning me because of my sexuality mm -hmm. and me losing that attachment that I had with my mum, I kind of found it with my partner, mm -hmm. which then be kind of became unhealthy. Mm -hmm. because then separation anxiety. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it was just, and then it becomes... Because he's my boyfriend, I'm now possessive or I might call his phone when he's out for too long because I'm worried. Mm -hmm. um, I suffer from low mood, low mood and anxiety. Um, when it came to that, when I, was, when I was given medication by my GP, my partner did tell me to stop taking it. So sometimes I think it's important for also if your partner might be suffering with mental health, maybe to do more research in and kind of understanding what they're going through. Yeah. And some people might think, oh, my partner might not. It's not an attractive trait. But... That's kind of a nice segue because I wanted to ask if anyone's actually dated anyone that they feel like has had mm -hmm. or has openly yeah. expressed to you that they have. Yeah, my, first, my, my very first girlfriend had um, anxiety and severe panic attacks. Mm. And coming from that, like, she came from a very domestic background in her home. Her brother used to, used to like, beat her up and stuff. And uh, I came from a home where my mum worked as a um, domestic violence and hate crime worker. So in my head, head naturally, mm -hmm. I adapted to my mum kind of being that mm -hmm. and then tried to be that for her. But then it started affecting me and then I started becoming aggressive because her aggressiveness fell on me. Yeah. And I think that's where the anxiety kind of just went Phew, and then mm -hmm. just took over. I think that's a key part though, isn't it? It's a case of like, I know that for the rest of my life, I'm always going to suffer 
from some kind of mental sure. issues. And I think everybody does. Yeah, I agree. And when you are in a relationship, it will bring out things that I, I was single for five years and I did all the self-development that you could possibly do. It got myself in a really steady position, then met my partner and all of a sudden certain insecurities were coming out of me, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's really important that when you do start recognising that actually there's traits that you're not necessarily comfortable with or you don't want to be experiencing it's like okay I'm not putting the blame on him I've mm. got to take accountability for mm. it and then you work through it I think if you are still putting the blame on somebody else or you're not recognizing certain behaviors then you're probably not ready for a relationship yeah yes. I think sometimes the deeper you get into a relationship like for my personal experience you can actually lose yourself and you don't realize you're mm -hmm. losing yourself. Mm -hmm. I think the more you have um, emotions and feelings towards that person, the more attached you do. Sometimes that actually is what makes your mind go. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I definitely have it, having looked back on some relationships, think actually maybe in some of them I was the problem but at mm. the same time I let too much of myself go mm. that actually when I had to claw it back it was a lot more difficult to you kind just, of deal with. Paris I know you touched on you in relationships you tend to kind of keep it to yourself was there a particular reason for that have you always been that way? I just think I'm in denial about the fact that I get anxious because like, I'm mm. a quite confident person but like I'm I'm get scared like around loads of other people if I don't know anyone um so I don't like to be like oh yeah I'm anxious because I feel like it's a negative thing I don't feel yeah. like it's a good thing to tell someone because they'll be like oh why is she so weird I was going through a breakdown through a uh, breakup through lockdown mm. and I would go and get in my car drive around listening to like I don't know Neo or something <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely gonna make you cry <laughs> and I would cry and then I would wait until like I'm okay and then I'd go back in my house because mm. I didn't want anyone to know I was upset it was yeah. so mm. weird mm. but I have dated like a lot of people that I think have had depression and yeah. I don't know how to deal with it because I wouldn't talk about it yeah. so when they say to me like oh I'm really low I'm in a really dark place I'm like oh I don't know what to do mm -hmm. And then if like what you said, if if we have an argument and I panic and and for me I want to fix it there and then. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't, it's my anxiety. It yeah. will sit with me. I'll have a panic attack. I have to sort it. And they're like, why are you being a psycho? Just let me have five minutes. And I'm like, yeah, I, think, I have to sort it now, otherwise yeah. I'm gonna be sat here Everything brewing. Like, and, like, like but, yeah. and then yeah. you will be a psycho. But then yeah. the yeah. is, I feel like often I'm when you're with a paper bag, like yeah. Yeah. But when you're like trying to force a conversation, because I know I can be like that as well, like I can't go to bed on yeah, like an hour yeah, like yeah, yeah. and then. But equally, if you try and force somebody to talk before they're ready that you're not going to get the response yeah. that you probably yeah. would have got yeah. or wanted that. Yeah. Yeah. So then they don't understand that I need that. So yeah. but then you don't on, understand you, that they yeah. need that space either. Touching okay. on what you said at the beginning, though, about you kind of feel like they might see that as like a negative kind of trait. I feel like a lot of the issues that can stem from relationships, especially in regards to mental health, is is that kind of level of us not really accepting who we are mm. and, and taking enough time to know who we are as people. Like, I'm, so I'm mixed race. Um, I grew up very much attached to the Greek side of my family and I I knew that I was comfortable, it, it is what I knew. But I met my St. Lucian side very, very late into my life, way after I'd started dating. And it wasn't probably until this year that I started realizing that the type of women that I was dating were to try and help me feel more attached to that side. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I would like, I would say to people, like, I'll never date a great a Greek woman, not because they are Greek, but like morally those things that they had, I knew that, you know what yeah. I mean? I didn't understand Caribbean culture like that. And I feel like I was really yeah. trying to identify that. But when I've, you know what I'm saying? But when I've really taken a step back, that could have been one of the reasons why my relationships haven't, I'm single, do you know what I mean? Haven't worked out. <laughs> um, not, be, not because they are where they're from, but I feel like I've gone for women that don't necessarily meet the needs, the things that I mm. need. You're, you're, you're looking for something I think that's that you need to fulfill. Like, like, yeah. Quite broken. Like, now I'm not understanding. Yeah, I think same. For me, understanding my needs and wants. Like the the, the females I I tend to date now often challenge the things yeah. that I often that before I tried to hide. When those things click in your mind, bruv, I am a different person. Like yep. co like completely, completely, completely different to who I was in March. Like get the word out vulnerability is so important your weakness isn't a weakness at all no, because no. Yeah. the more you I open have, up like, to people massive weakness problems but it's like no one but it's ever not, really sees me cry but say, then my mum's really strong and I've never really seen my dad cry unless somebody's like dying that's what you categorise as strong that's what you categorise as strong 
my like my categorization is strong like I probably would have said that in the past because I didn't cry for like 10 years at one point yeah but now I'm at a point where it's like do you know what my strength is the fact that I am able to experience every emotion that I feel and communicate that with someone else do you know what I mean I like that you touched on your family kind of like situation and what you kind of saw growing up because how do we feel like growing up in broken homes Mm -hmm. affect our mental health and then ha- affects how we handle relationships. I, mean, I never, I was never, re- I wasn't, I never was raised in a broken home because my parents obviously they're still together. But how I feel like it affected me was my dad had the tendencies of like either hitting me or saying something rude to me that day that would make me upset and cry. But before the day would end, he'd always apologize and say, I didn't mean it. Okay, mm-hmm. I love you. You know, dad loves you. So as, as an adult in my relationship, I can say something that's so heartbreaking to your partner, something they've told you about their mother, or in an argument, I can say something really nasty. I think it's okay. As long as I say, babe, like I didn't mean it. Similarly for me, I, like, my parents are still together, but I think it was the relationship I've had with my dad. And it was only in probably my early 20s, I had a mentor. And he actually brought up the point that if I don't fix, or if me and my dad don't fix the relationship we have, that's going to repeat. So for my mental health, for my relationships, like even I was seeing a, 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 um, someone and, I remember I did something and immediately when I did it, psychologically, I was like, right, that's my dad. Yeah. Like, the same way he demeaned and spoke to me, it just became a habit. I think ultimately it's you accepting yourself, knowing yourself, working on yourself, mm-hmm. but also finding the right partner. Just not not to, not to heal you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like when you're in those relationships, the only way these situations can be handled is with a partner who... Self-awareness, accountability, acceptance. Yeah, yes. it is true yes. though, because I do find that I like, I've got quite a healing personality. Like if you were upset, even though I wouldn't cry in front of you, I'd be like, oh my God, mm. like what can I do to yeah. like, make you laugh yeah, or smile yeah. or whatever. So in relationships, I tend to, I don't want to say attract broken people, but I do. And I feel like I'm so focused on making sure they're okay. Yeah, that I, yeah, yeah, yeah I get damaged and yeah. neglected. And yes. then I'm just sat there like, well, Who's there for me? Yeah, It's one of those topics that Take we could like, yeah. just talk <laughs> forever yeah. about. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to get involved in the conversation, however, please do DM us or drop us a comment on any of the social media sites at Mavro Talks. Ooh. I think for me, mental health in a relationship, my understanding of it is making sure that you are 100% within yourself mm-hmm. um, before you allow someone into your world or you explore someone else's world. Um, I think it's important to know what works for you and what's not working for you and be honest with someone in that process of mm. dating or getting to know. 100% agree. Yeah. I'm just going to start off by saying, um, yeah, my first ex completely effed up my mental health. Oh, okay. And, yeah, just, so I'm just going to chat I'm, that one. So, I'll, no, I'll speak from okay? personal experience. I'm, I'm good now. Okay, okay. It took about six years. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, on a real, it actually did. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> so getting a relationship with her, it's like I was trying to be her strength. Okay. But then it ended up depleting me. Right. Okay. And then I ended up building up traits that I got from her. So like her temper, her aggression, that all started to play off on me. Yeah. Um, but obviously, what, six years on now, mm. a lot of the, I'd say aftermath, a lot of the things I had to deal with on the side yeah. have now made me wiser as to how important it is to look after yourself, first and foremost. And when you get into a relationship with someone, open communication about what's going on and knowing you're aware of your insecurities mm-hmm. or your what you're going through, um, as opposed to keeping it to yourself. Because everyone has this kind of like filter, yeah. you know, this best image that they put on. Yeah. And when, it, when the relationship starts to unfold, it tends to be that, hold on, I didn't know that about you before. And you don't know what that could mentally do to someone else when you bring that to the table later on, as opposed to tackling it early on if it's something that they're necessarily, you know, comfortable or able to deal with mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So you have to show them the good and bad and your struggle. Your struggle is very important so people know how to uh, communicate with you, how to connect with you, what makes you feel better, what mm-hmm. makes you feel worse. And there's times when that person can be the shoulder to cry on. Mm. That person can be the person that makes you feel uplifted. Do you get what I mean? So I, I definitely think it's important. I'd rather know someone's demons and assist that, in making them be- a better person rather than not knowing and being met by a demon. Open the door instead of having me open it. Right. 
I have experienced it from me having uh, mental health issues during a relationship and also my partner having that. Um, and I think it's really important to understand that regardless of you know where you are sitting, whether you're the one who's going through that or whether your partner's going through that, any mental health struggle is always temporary. I mean, yes, of course, you will have down days, down months, down years, um, and some mental health um, issues are there with you for life, but those terrible days that are such a struggle for both of you are temporary. So kind of, I guess, don't give up on the other person just because, oh, my partner's been, I don't know, has locked himself in his room for seven days and hasn't spoken to me, so I'm gonna break up with him or something like that. Yeah, no, I think it's important that if you're going to go into a relationship with someone with mental health, you still have to have that strong backbone in order oh, to see them through it and help them and listen to them rather than just dismissing it as erratic behaviour. Yeah, no, completely. I completely agree with you. And I think there's a very fine line between sharing the burden with someone and actually taking it on as your own. Yeah. Because as you rightly said, you know, if you've got two of you who are carrying, you know, a mental health problem together, it can really just completely tear the entire relationship apart because none of you can kind of, I guess, get the help you need and the strength and stability you need to move forwards with your mm. life a little bit. So I think it can be a very, very, like, it's a very fine line. Yeah, I think you can become reliant on each other as well. If you're both going through it, you can almost be like, you know, like I need you and you need me, so let's stay together and then oh, you so, move so many times I've heard <laughs> that where people have, you know, they both them and their partner have, you know, had mental health issues and they have both stayed together because they have developed this toxic codependency where it's like, well, if you leave, I'm gonna kill myself or mm -hmm. if I leave, I'm gonna kill myself. And then it just, it, it goes nowhere and both of them end up kind of self-destructing so i think it's a very fine line you have to look after yourself for yeah, sure definitely hello and welcome to mavra talks love sex and relationships today we are going to be discussing mental health but before we go and delve into that subject who do we have elise samuel kira michelle i'm alex stefano Hello all. So discussing mental health, <laughs> yes. I guess let's start the conversation out. Obviously, if you don't want to answer, that's absolutely fine. But who here does suffer with mental health issues or has in the past? Obviously, if you don't want to share, that's absolutely I fine. I definitely have in the past. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think I have in the past, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Mm. Anyone no, else? I, kind think, of... I think everyone might have done to, 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 some degree. to, yeah. Yeah. to a degree. Yeah. 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 Maybe not even aware of it. Yeah. I think a lot of people probably aren't aware of it. I mean, Alex, you said you definitely yeah. have, yeah, in the past. If I was to really look back on my life, I would say there was two periods of time where like, I, I was really going through depression and suicidal thoughts and all of that type of stuff. And I feel like when I reflect back on it now, a lot of a, those times really had an effect on how I handled relationships. Mm -hmm. The first time was when I was like 14 to 17. So I wasn't in any relationships, but that's when you start to kind of have your interaction heavy with like, women and do you know what I mean that kind of thing mm -hmm. and the other time was when I was it's probably between 20 and 22 23 which I now I'm actually dating um I think it's definitely something that is not spoken enough within relationships and I also feel like not I kind of I'm not sure if I really should be kind of saying this but like almost not enough leeway is kind of given because a lot of time a lot of the behavior that we express to our partners or they express to us we just put down as that person's crazy mm -hmm. as opposed to actually having a conversation and yeah, being like there's reasons why duh, duh, duh. if you if you knew about this or if i express this in a different way we can handle each other a lot mm -hmm. it's part of getting to know someone yeah yeah reason, so. i mean i um i wouldn't say suffer in fact i think it's the best fucking thing they've diagnosed me with um i have borderline <laughs> personality disorder which sounds worse than it no, actually, no, it probably is. Like, no, 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 it's worse than it is. No, it's fucked. Um, which basically does what it says on the tin. My, per I have two completely separate personalities, mm -hmm. which will come out depending on what, you know, scenario I'm in. So I literally refer to it as the angel and the devil. So the angel is probably how we're discussing right here. You know, I'm fine. But the devil in me is, it's like a complete switch. I yeah. am way overly confident. I have a complete godlike complex. So I literally believe in my flesh. Alex is obsessed with me. That's why That's why I'm on this podcast, because you're absolutely obsessed with me. Like, literally, a Kanye West God complex um, and very destructive behaviour. So, like, I will... I will um, excessively spend, excessively drink, excessively do drugs, or, like, 
just in terms of my boundaries, there are no boundaries. So if I'm in devil mode and I'm kind of like, oh, um, that girl is having a really rough time right now. You should try and be supportive. My devil mode will go, that's a broken girl, which means easy game. Let me slot myself <laughs> in there, whatever. And that's complete devil mode. And um, I only got diagnosed with that like two years ago. And I know that in previous relationships, going to your point about leeway, People just labelled me as crazy. I mean, clinically, I am mm. crazy, but I'm also not quite crazy. crazy. <laughs> that level of awareness was insightful. Mm. I was like, swear. Like, but, it's but that's so after years of, yeah, of deciphering yeah, 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 yeah. what it is. Um, has anyone actually dated anyone with a mental health issue? I've dated people that have admitted they've got mental health, and also people that would not care to admit that they genuinely do mm. have. And mm. as somebody that has, su- obviously, mental health is... There's a wide range, mm-hmm. but I do feel like there is subtle indications like that you can kind of, you especially if you've experienced certain shit, you can kind of see. That's not. I know that's what I know what you're doing or what you're trying to, to do. Yeah. Um, How do you see that? Well, I think it really depends on the so dynamic. That, yeah, mm-hmm. you, the dynamic. What issue they they might have? What issues you have that forces you to see mm-hmm. those things in that person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a bit. I think it's too broad of a. Definitely, like my ex-husband had something. Like, because when you... <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> no, no, it starts off with just anger issues and then it kind of progressed for him not wanting to shower, not wanting to eat properly, oh, yeah. like the self-care mm-hmm. element. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the self-hate element. And so over time, and I'm like, go and get help, and he just wouldn't get any help. Yeah. So it's kind of mental health. If one, part, one partner has mental health, it's a huge strain on the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when they are Agreed. trying to help and that person... Genuinely, can actually yeah. see that they yeah. have an issue. Like mm-hmm. I was a maximum for fifteen years, so I've seen this grow and grow and grow over. Get okay. worse, yeah. And every time I'm like, we need to go and address this. He's like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. And then six months later, he's stepped up again. Yeah. And he's even worse. So, mm-hmm. um, I think that takes a lot of toll on the other partner. Mm-hmm. To the point where that partner can experience their own mental health issues, trying yeah. to deal with the anxiety as related to treading on eggshells every day yeah Mm. so it's like it needs to be more spoken about and i think from a man's point of view they find it harder to speak and admit that they have an issue Mm. so do you know what's really difficult so when we're speaking right now about mental health Mm -hmm. i think in 2017 was the first time i actually went to the doctors because i had a problem with deciphering between i feel really sad and this has gone past being really sad. sad yeah. yeah. So I would suppress it for a while. I'd think, you know what, I will cool, be okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my smile on and I'm going to mm-hmm. go to work mm-hmm. and I can distract myself. After a while, obviously, we, we know it's more than that yeah. at the time. I just thought, what's wrong with you? I pick yourself mm-hmm. up. It had got to a point when I remember saying to the doctor, it felt like my mask had slipped and I couldn't pick it up quick enough mm-hmm. to play mm-hmm. the game in society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... The voices, and when you watch programs, and when they deal with mental health, particularly things like schizophrenia and things like that, it's the voices in their head. Yeah. It wasn't other people's voices, it was my own yeah, voice yeah. being so uh-huh. unkind to me, yeah. and it would get louder and yeah. louder. And then you feel frightened because there's so much stigma mm-hmm. against mental health. I, I'm of sound mind and body, I don't think that anyone's an alien, but I, and I didn't know how to go to friends and family and tell them that yeah. I was in tears by the time like, that that meant I was at my breaking point when I was at the doctors because mm-hmm. for me personally I don't think there's anything wrong with getting um medication to help however how I live my life I frowned upon it so it made me feel mm-hmm. even more bad about mm-hmm. myself and I was in a position where mm-hmm. sincerely without those tablets for a period of time I didn't I didn't know how I was going to make it through also I think one of you mentioned like suicidal thoughts and things like that it was really odd because I never I never wanted to kill myself. I'm a big baby. So the idea of hurting myself, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to be here. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, you I just to didn't want to be here, but I didn't necessarily want to yeah. die. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. think that touches again on how broad those those things can be. Because yeah. I relate to so much to what you're saying, because when I was going through what I was going through, it was very much felt like a dark cloud was always over you. Yeah. And I know people say that in quite a loose term, but like, there was the conscious person that I am knowing, okay, this is the right thing. No, people don't think that about you. All of that type of shit. But there is that 10%, that small little voice is so much louder than the other one. So mm. I would remove myself or I do things that people feel like, oh, why Why is he acting in that way? But I'm convincing myself that you lot don't want me here. You've not said nothing. Mm. Everything is calm. Yeah. But 
I, you lot don't want me here, I'm a burden to your life, I'm all of these things. But in reality, if you just have a conversation with that person, yeah, a lot of that time, what they will say will at least suppress some of those things. Yeah. Mm. It might rehash. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's going to be a fix, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But a lot of the times, because we feel like we're so convinced that what our mind is telling us is the right thing, mm. we don't exactly. allow for any other answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just um, quickly, I, I do want to get back to kind of the whole insecurities and almost internal paranoia. Mm. Um, for those people, I guess for you, Elise, you know, um, being with your ex-husband who may or may not have had a mental health issue, I think sometimes when people... <laughs> say when, when people say they have a mental health issue or have been diagnosed with a mental health um, issue sometimes they will make excuses for genuinely poor behavior mental health or <laughs> not agree. that is not an okay thing to do and it gets very techy because like were you in the right frame of mind blah blah blah, blah. but I've certainly I've made excuses for shitty behavior I'll be like oh well I don't know. Yeah, I I, I punched a hole through that the wall the and that, that was the, the other bit. bit. And it's like, no, <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. I can't yeah. I can't go around punching people because I'm having a mental health break. I need to take responsibility for my actions. Like, how do we feel about I, I think guess, ultimately that just comes down to that the person who is suffering from what that issue is does not want to go through the pain of confronting that issue. Yeah. You're you don't want to have a mental health issue, but you also don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you continue to live, live in that kind of, yeah. like you said, give excuses. What to about yourself. you, Stefano? I've been quite lucky and blessed that I've been in re healthy relationships, I guess, mm -hmm. where everyone knows what's going on. I feel like the closest point I may have been is probably with my partner where she was much more older than me. And there was a, there was a situation where I really needed to understand that she's been through more than me in life, you know, and mm -hmm. she's had partners before me and all that. Mm -hmm. So it was just me wrapping my head around it for a while. I really couldn't, and it was really affecting me. And just every now and then it would come like, just, it's like a big void in my head. Um, and I even started looking it up and it's called apparently OCD, but it's- It's to do with your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. With your thoughts and how you feel and how you're looking at the situation because it's not completely that. And then after like a few months of being together and just, I was over it, I started to realize how, how not silly I'd say, but how unimportant that mm -hmm. feeling that I was having was. So I'm not sure whether I would classify as mental health, but it did mess with me in terms of, even when I was working out, it would come to my mind mm -hmm. in terms of what has happened and how I feel about it. But I got over it, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Um, looking back at it, if anyone was going through the same thing, I would be able to talk, talk through them yeah. on how to like look at that situation and how you can get past it. That's it. There's a stigma. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's still, a st even though we talk about it a lot more, there's still a stigma about the word mental health. Absolutely. Like, I even felt all, down, I felt just all the would health... just say mental health issue. I'm like, it shouldn't really be an issue. It's... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah, is your, yeah, yeah. the health of your brain. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, like, it's it's so yeah. regular. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you think mental health and you instantly think the schizophrenia. Yeah. The, thoughts, the intent, the, yeah. 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 Not the huge, broad subject that it actually is. Mm -hmm. So I think that stigma needs to be broken down. Absolutely. Definitely. Even though we all know it's got yeah. so many pathways, but I think <sighs> your instant thought is, that guy's just nuts, or mm -hmm. I mean, that guy's going to harm me or harm themselves. Mm -hmm. so you don't mm -hmm. think of the smaller little branches of it. Yeah. Samuel, you've been a rather, you, you've been kind of in I, thought. I was, just yeah, I was observing, I, I'm, I was observing and just taking in all what you guys are saying and I'm like applying it to my world and what I may have noticed, may not have noticed. Mm. And I think, <clears throat> I think the real turning point for me in terms of being aware of mental health as a, in a broad sense was um, there was a girl I was dating and she told me quite early on that she's a crap baby and there's, she wow. has like a chemical imbalance okay. and yeah. that can cause her to react in certain ways. Yeah. And sorry, just, just for anyone who doesn't know what a crack baby is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that would be when the mother is addicted to crack and has been smoking, smoking crack, crack while pregnant for the child. Yeah. Okay. So her mum was smoking crack while she was pregnant for her. Mm -hmm. And um, what it did is it let me see the little things. As in before, uh, a mental health issue would be something big while well, I wait till there's something big. And I was like, oh, there, there's a problem here. Mm. Yeah. But because she made me aware that, like, you know what, I got this chemical imbalance, it kept me on my toes, if that mm. made sense. So 
I was like being more aware like, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe she's reacting like this because X, Y, and Z, where I'm trying to find a story behind little things rather than just this big outburst. Mm -hmm. Like a little thing bothers her about me eating the last hula hoop. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And rather than me just thinking she's being cranky, I'm like, yo, what like, what about it mm -hmm. affects you about me eating this last hula hoop without mm -hmm. telling you? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I'd say for me, um, obviously... That, that's quite a niche scenario, but it did put things into perspective for me mm -hmm. in terms of how I look at the story behind our actions and how mm -hmm. all these little things matter, like every detail matter yeah. because the dots connect them. Could that it's be just... a negative? Could you, like, in your next relationship, could you be looking for those signs in them? I think it made me better as a partner because it made me more aware, it made me more sensitive. Mm -hmm. I, I felt I was more aware to a woman's sensitivity because mm. there was small things that I'd be thinking she's over yet yeah. you're being yeah. so emotional yeah. Yeah. but it's because I couldn't comprehend what they have gone through mm. that has led them to be so worked up over yeah. something so yeah. little because without the backstory they are over yeah. yet yeah. without I, it I think the responsibility falls on both people I yeah. feel like everyone needs to do exactly what you did become a lot more aware and a lot more sensitive to these issues but this, at the same time you also, as the person carrying these things, need to yeah. do your best to not allow previous, especially yeah. relationship things, mm -hmm. to try. It's it's a really difficult thing to do, but the ultimate goal is to try to not carry certain hurt from exes into yeah. your, next your new relationship. Do you know, do you know, it's interesting. Yeah. So, um, she was actually getting aware that I was actually becoming like she was going to see a therapist. She's seen a therapist, and I remember. One day she came back and she goes, I was speaking to my therapist about you. And she was saying that you're probably experiencing emotional fatigue. And mm. she was saying because mm. of me. And she was actually being concerned because she felt I was worrying more about her than myself. And yeah. even little things like that yeah. kind of brought me back. And was like, yo, you know what? I'm actually, I need to, I need to check myself on myself. Well. And yeah, can so I just, right. Can I just ask, because I, I kind of, I think everyone's briefly touched on things, whether they've experienced mental health problems or someone who they've dated has experienced mental health problems. And I know you spoke about it. Um, insecurities, and I'm kind of thinking of like baggage, if you like. So mm. I know that sounds really terrible for me to say, but you know how you were saying that obviously you were you were helping your other half cope with her mental health issues and stuff like that. And Stefano, you were saying that you know you had another half who was who could have been displaying signs of a specific mental health issue, like in insecurities of of any description in a relationship, like. Can we all acknowledge that for, to some extent, if you are on the receiving end of that, there is a lot of emotional fatigue. Absolutely. And like, Absolutely. where do you, I guess, where do you draw the line and think, do you know what, this insecurity is causing me so much grief and potentially is giving my partner that emotional fatigue? At what point do you draw the line? Do you draw it at when your partner's starting to say enough is enough, I can't do this anymore? Like, what are the red flags for you saying, I need to get I my don't shit together? It works. No, I, think, no. I think a partner saying enough is enough. I did it so many times that didn't ever encourage him to mm -hmm. go and get help. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you, they can only get help when they're ready to get help. Absolutely, and whether that yeah. partner is still mm -hmm. there or whether that partner's long gone, that's when that first moment, that's mm -hmm. my what, opinion. What made it. you decide to sort of go and see the doctor? Because I know that you said you, you had that image of, the mask slipping off and you not being able to get it back on in time. Like, was it a friend going, hey, you need to sort it out? Or what was that turning point? Of I was quite point. secretive, so I don't even really think until a little bit down the road that my friends even really knew what was going on. I was living in Croatia for a bit. I came back to the UK and I don't, like, at the time, I sincerely didn't identify it as anxiety or what have you but I was so fearful I was fearful to leave my house to go to the local shop I wasn't necessarily phoning friends to say how I felt because I felt silly at this point um nothing had happened I hadn't broken up with a boyfriend I hadn't lost the job you know things that could trigger mm -hmm. you to mm -hmm. feel sad mm -hmm. and so this was all alien to me I had no explanation so how did I anyone feeling. notice this like no it's it oh was, shell's it, not going out the house whatever. it was mum it was mm, months. Really we knew mom. that I was um, a Not social. Okay. I was a social butterfly. I wanted to go everywhere, mm. do everything, and all of a sudden, I wasn't. Didn't really want to get dressed. That's when she started because wow. I love. I used okay. to love clothes and what have you. I didn't mm. want to get dressed, and eventually, I opened up to her, and it was her that kind of went with me to the doctors. 
And I, I just remember just all of what they, it just, he even said to me, you haven't broken up with a boyfriend. You're nothing's mm-hmm. triggered you. You're clinically depressed is what mm-hmm. he said. Mm-hmm. And I think, don't quote me, but I'm sure he put me on something called Search a Line or Search Oh, I'm on that. Um, and, oh, I remember the first, it was about a month before they kicked in. Mm-hmm. And when, the, just as they were starting to kick in, I remember just being so sleepy all the time and what have you. I developed uh, snoring. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, literally... I mean, I don't know if it was a placebo or what, but after a while, gradually, I mean, I started to be open with my friends, told them I was on medication, told them how I was feeling. Lots of them were like, you can come to me for everything, anything. And I know yeah, that I could go to everyone and as well for anything. You can be saying that, but in, your, in that state. It... People's boundaries or what, like you said, what their line is or what, at what point do you know to enter? Like that's different for everyone because... Even though I relate it to a lot to what you previously said, mm. I didn't experience those same things that, that you were saying now mm-hmm. as like triggers in your mind to get you to that point. Like I know the first time for me, like the two times that I've been heavily depressed, it took something really dramatic for me to kind of wake up. And I'm also, I'm quite good at hiding shit. So like people didn't know, all my excuses were so thorough. Mm. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's real. I remember the first time I was experiencing it, I had a friend walk in on me attempting. And that, like, seeing their reaction was the only thing to get me out of that, that place to even realise, like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. And then the, I'm not a violent person at all. Mm. But the second time, I just remember after a certain situation happened, going home, trashing my uni room. Mm. But, like, to the point where after that, I broke down and I called my mum to be like, I don't, I'm scared mm. of, like, what I can potentially do. Mm. I need help. You know what I mean? And then started my counselling process that way. Like, I think what I'm trying to basically say is it's impossible to know. Everyone's line is different. How it affects Absolutely. you is different. Like, I just think the conversation needs... Like, you people need to do their best to try and be open about the issues, yeah. small or large. And you also got to be a good listener. I completely agree with you. And um, I, I think that's a great way to conclude. Yeah. Um, if you want to get involved with any of the points that we discussed today with mental health... You know what to do. You can find us on all social media channels or you can leave a comment down below. We're back again, bro. Come on. My guy, Alex. The Avengers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So today we have a double. Got another one. It's a DP dildo. Okay. Double dip. Do you know what I mean? Double penetration. Cool. So purpose. Yeah. This right here kind of works like a cock ring. It looks like, you know them Harry Balls? <laughs> we were wifing someone up. So this basically goes around your dick and around your balls. Okay. So this kind of like hangs from you, pretty much. Okay. Hence the double, yeah. you know what I mean? The double play. Okay, um, obviously, again, because it is super elastic, depending on size, does fit pretty much. So one size anybody, fits all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like... For me, the best thing about this is the fact that it like, <laughs> you can kind of, because obviously if you're DPing a girl mm, mm, mm. and this is on you, you certain just, angles, yeah, you, do you get, you get, do you get what I'm saying? So you might be hearing, hit her with the boom. You might, do you get what I'm saying? And it is quite rigid. So when you actually do have it in position, it tends to not change too far. Um, it is specifically used for the arse, hence why it's actually quite thin. That's probably not going to do much in the vagina. Um, but, yes. Yeah, a lot of girls are into this this, this arse. I'm not personally into that anal and all of that, so one of these would be great for me. Get me? Our girls are really into it now, so That's not I would really just you. hook it on and... <laughs> it is super soft. Um, again, when you add lube to that, it does make it very kind of like... I mean, super slippery, um, which obviously eases with the, yeah, you know I mean, the entrance. You get what I'm saying? This would be good. I can't lie, man. How much is it? Um, I this one was actually ten pound. It was on sale though. I feel like the actual price was eight, between eighteen and twenty pound. See me, I don't really have too much trays in that car. I, just, I don't know. I'm not really. I just use me. Is this gonna be your first one? This is like it's top boy level, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Level, the first, start I out. You just be at I home. Like this, Stress still though, fam. Yeah, no, trust me, and I'm stressed at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good still. Like but yeah, man, that's, like like that's pretty much your double, double yeah. penetration dildo. Double penetration strap on dildo. Value for money, five. Quietness, five. Ease of use, 
three, durability, three, practicality, four, available to purchase at Bondara, Love Honey, Anne Summers, and most other sex toy manufacturers. Hi guys, welcome back to Mavro Talks Love, Sex and Relationships. Today we are talking about mental health in dating. We have a question from social media, but before we get into that, who do we have on the sofa? Hi, my name is King George. I'm Amber. I'm Alex. Bradley. Tori. <laughs> Paris. Um, so the question is, at what point should you discuss mental health in a relationship? Very start. Yep. Yeah, straight up. First, First date. date. It's how you go into it. Yeah. You don't give them the deepest stuff, just make them aware of something. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I think it's just part of a conversation. Like you wouldn't go out to be like, <laughs> by, the way, <laughs> by the way, I, I am not one to be crossed. It's more just under, it's, it's understanding the person, what makes them tick. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, I feel like there's so much taboo when you title it as mental health. It has a spectrum as well, because you could like if I'm trying to move to get trying to get to know someone and it's like I wanna have sex with you later like I'm, or whatever I'm not going to just be like oh I suffer from low mood and anxiety <laughs> <laughs> like, not that that's going to be a turn off because like, like I'm still going to get to have sex with you and like date you just, and stuff like just that just do it after you've had sex <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's something for me it's like first. do you mind not even date that person for long and you give yeah. them a piece of information about you say, they don't need it's a matter of permanence to me like if you're someone now and I feel like you're going to be in my life for some time and this thing is going to grow and develop or you want them to and these, yeah and these tendencies are going to like the things are going to start to come up or I as soon as I notice raw my mental health is starting to move a bit mad I kind of need to make you aware because it may have that's the point but if I'm just mm-hmm. meeting you and I don't I even know it, what it's what's going with it this. just goes back to us accepting ourselves though isn't it it's like yeah. having a problem it's not that it's, it's, it's not, not an issue also, no, it's not, it's not a feel... first date like if it, if it comes up in conversation that's cool yeah but I can sit here and say I suffer from anxiety and depression, right? right? I did suffer from it in lockdown, but prior to that, it had been years, yeah. okay? Yeah. So I'm not going to sit there. I've just met you and be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I suffer from depression. Like, because it's not that I'm like, yeah. it's not <laughs> a month. They're going to be like, okay, I'm going to the loo. I probably would have a conversation about my past and be like, do you know what? Yeah, I, I like, I spent five years single and focused on self-development because actually prior to that, yeah. I'd oh, suffered quite yeah, badly right. because X, Y, Z. And it yeah, would end up being a conversation. Mm-hmm. If you just come out of it, I'm not yeah. going to lard, run a mile. But I'm really proud of what I've been through. Yeah. yeah, I'm so proud of my it's depression. It's your I'm journey, so it's your growth. It. It's, it's, yeah. You've come out, and yeah. I've never been here with yeah. You come out of it almost feeling like I'm a new, I'm a better person yeah. for it. I've grown I'm from evolved. it and uh, I've yeah. elevated in life. I'm very much a person when I meet someone, it's all cards on the table. Mm-hmm. I have no yeah. secrets. You accept me for who I am, and that is it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people find that a little bit intimidating because yeah, I'm like, okay, right. I'm I'm me, I'm strong. This is my stuff. These are my pros, these are my cons. Elise. Samuel. Kira. Michelle. I'm Alex. Stefano. So a uh, question from social media um, around mental health in relationships. At what point should you discuss mental health in a relationship? Is it something that you discuss in a relationship? Fuck, the floor. <laughs> I, think it yes. should, I think it should be, <sighs> but it's not. I, I, I set pace. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite open and vulnerable with people I get to know in general. So yeah. I think I lead, so I open up and if they feel comfortable to open up as well, mm-hmm. they will. Mm-hmm. If they don't open up generally, I won't really be interested in them anyway. So mm-hmm. I tend to get interested in people that open up or share. share. I mean, with time, you've got people that fake open up. So they, yeah. they yeah. act like yeah. they're sharing something they're big, but they're not. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, I've met so many people and have so many friends that eventually open up to me and share all their fake stuff they open up about. Mm-hmm. So people have given me the game it's already. It's like two layers yeah. of, yeah. let yeah. me test the waters with this. If yeah. you haven't dumped me then in six months' no, time, I, I'll I, tell yeah, you I've got about right. 20 layers. I'll, I'll drop in this little one. If you're okay with that, there'll be a bigger fish. And then, and then eventually, six years down the line, you drop the big one. Like, oh, no, can you make sense? I don't I drop the... I take it I don't yeah, I, th- I remove the power out of it do you know what I'm saying because yeah. when I keep yeah. if if I keep something inside I know it's going to bother me yeah and, but and some people are fearful of that if they say the big thing first mm-hmm. the rejection, the rejection the from rejection. seeing yeah. that um, this, what, yeah. what I'm saying is that by me setting pace, I'm saying it makes it more likely for them to feel comfortable because mm-hmm. a lot of the time the fear comes from I don't want them to use it against me mm-hmm. so if I'm giving them something big they feel they have some sort of collateral they feel like 
if if I've given them something big, well, I can say it's crazy. Yeah. Exactly, they can mm-hmm. use that against me if I use what they give me. Yeah. If I that feel makes like sense, we all just need to like take it's, the stigma away. It's one take the stigma away, but we just need to accept who we are. Like yes. our mental health is a part of who we are. So mm-hmm. if I say something to you and you get scared and run away, bro, you work for me in it. Yeah. 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 But I feel like it's too late to have the discussion when something's happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's also a way of, you know what I mean? Introducing kind of conversation. You know what I mean? Like letting them know, so, oh, I used to experience this. I've had these, like, boom, boom. boom. Mm-hmm. If I they can't handle it, bro, I, need someone, <laughs> I need someone stronger or different. Yeah. But yeah. I, understand, cool. I understand. Why they may hide it because sometimes, yeah. like, my relationship has bloomed, of I still bloomed, even though there was things that we kept to each other. But once we found out about them, we kind of worked through the issue. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if it was if we if it was mentioned at a, a very earlier stage, we would have not been where we was in that relationship. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't would have not moved on. I think as well, like when. Uh, so I know that sometimes I've held back from not necessarily in a relationship, but even friendship or at work, telling people about, you know, my borderline personality disorder, um, because I don't want people to start going, oh, well, she's being hormonal and it's because she's mm. fucking, you know, going through an episode. It's like, yeah. no, I just haven't slept or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my period. Like, for yeah, fuck's sake, yeah. get a grip. Yeah. What about you, Shelley? If you're dating somebody... It's a process of trying to get to know them to figure mm-hmm. out whether or not you want to establish something yeah. more solid. So I don't believe on date one I should be saying, well, you know, I had anxiety and depression and I wanted... Like, it's not going to be However, once you make a commitment to one another, everyone in life, and I stand by it on everything, I'm allowed to make an informed decision. If you don't give me all the information, then I'm not making an informed yeah. decision about this yeah. unison yeah. that I'm Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And so by that point it's absolutely important that you're open about yeah. things that you've gone through, what mm. have you, and yeah. But date one, you wouldn't see me on a first date yeah, telling yeah, you yeah. my <laughs> life story. I find it interesting when people would like start at date one and then go hit, like, I but mean, I, like, I, I I'm not saying you, that but yeah, in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I really don't want, yeah, but, want but to hear the it. The thing is, even if it's date 10, date 13, date 20, it's it still, still feels early, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. like the commitment is Yeah, early. as in, as in, Someone, I disagree. Do you? Oh, I, 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 I disagree. It's like me. There's people I've known 15 years who don't know parts of my life. Mm-hmm. Because you don't feel comfortable to give it to them, and that's fine. But if you're making a, you know, a commitment to somebody, whereby you're saying you're in a relationship and you're moving in the direction oh where you're going to live together, how? How I, 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 I agree. You? I agree with See, that. I was married, I and it was still part of my life prior to my marriage. He, didn't know about even when we divorced because it was my to me that's alarming yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, that's alarming. I find that alarming I, I, I would be upset it's fine it's, it's fine if it's details but I think if it's a major issue worth talking about that's gonna possibly have an effect on the way the relationship is going to be then I think it should be discussed if it's not going to have any form of effect or if it hasn't change your personality completely or it hasn't changed the way you behave as a person, then okay, that's fine. See, that's, yeah, that's why I agree. If it's something yeah. you've dealt with and it's not affecting you ongoing, then why does it need to be brought up? I feel like you need to just take the conversation as it comes. I think yeah. the issue yeah. stems from when you're trying to hide. If we never have a conversation about it, we don't have a conversation about it. I don't yeah. need to cut a bud just to let you know. Like, nah. But if we're having about, if we're talking about certain issues and I know in my, in my brain, I've got something I, I could say here, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. That's personally, that's an issue. For me, I feel, I feel it's um, like sometimes we do play down the importance of details mm-hmm. because they're little things we think aren't important. Oh, but, actually, but then the, oh, we, we also yeah. ask ourselves that like, we'll be like, oh, they don't really understand me. Yeah. And they don't know these small details. Like <clears throat> maybe my journey. Maybe how I am with women now is not how I was before. Mm-hmm. So I may feel there's no point telling her this because that's not who I am now. But by telling her that can help her understand my journey yes. to then yeah. help her understand who I am now, yeah. how yeah. I got there, how I grow, how I learn. Yeah. All these little details like that mean right nothing yeah. to, to someone else. Like It's so important, but yeah. we're, we're then victim yeah. of our own frustration of, um, why don't they understand me? Like yeah. I feel so misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Same with trust as well. Like your partner can get angry at you for not trusting them, mm-hmm. but the trust comes from them. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. the more they open up, the more you can trust them. Yeah. But 
For a long time for me, I didn't know. I felt guilty. Mm. Like, they'd be like, you don't trust me, but I trust you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know why. Well, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to work it out. And I don't know. Because I'm opening up. They're seeing yeah. all of me, yeah. so they know what they're getting. Yeah. But a part of me is still trying to work out who they mm. are. Yeah. A part of me knows there's still certain mistakes. I, I think... I, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I, I really, really do. I mean, I think just looking at the landscape, like, obviously, you've... Some of us are like, yeah, you should discuss it. Immediately, others of us are like, yeah, maybe, you know, wait till a couple of days in. And, you know, I, 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 dates, <laughs> dates, right. dates. Um, yeah. and I, I agree very much with your, with your point, at least. There are certain things which you may just want to keep to yourself. Of course, if you guys at home want to get involved with the discussion, you know where we are. We're on all social media channels, or you can leave a comment down below. Julian!